In this video, I'm going to give you the neuroscience behind what causes somebody to bounce their leg. And also a three-step process so you can figure out when did this start? What created it? When did it happen for you? And finally, for those of you who'd like to learn to stop bouncing your leg, I'm going to give you a link and to another video that will give you that full process. So let's start by talking about the neuroscience, all right? The first thing to know is that what creates this is something in our brain called the basal ganglia, all right? Now, its job is to smooth out and coordinate our thoughts, feelings, and actions. It moderates all those, mix, mix, takes all the incoming information and makes sure they all work together smoothly. Well, in a situation like this, that's not happening. And when, when the basal ganglia gets overloaded, it shuts off. So kind of think of, you know, when your breakers, you know, your lights go off, it flips a switch. Like here's a great example to show you how this happens to all of us. You ever have a gorgeous man or woman come up and say hi to you and you just go blank. You don't know what to say, what to do. You're completely overwhelmed. Well, that's your basal ganglia, the emotion of how attractive they are, the thoughts, all of that information just overloaded you. You went blank and numb. Well, in this instance with the bouncing leg, what's happened is it didn't actually shut off. It actually got stuck. All right. So think of a car. You know, you can hear the car, the engine revving up as it's going from second to third gear, and then it shifts and it quiets. That's what the basal ganglia should do when it's operating effectively. Well, with somebody who's bouncing their leg, that didn't happen. They just kept revving. See, they went through a deeply emotional experience that overwhelmed them, that's never been dealt with or processed. And so the basal ganglia is on fire. It's a deep anxiety that's stuck in the body and it's getting expressed by that bouncing leg, all right? Now, the thing to recognize here is, this is difficult for people to hear that, well, wait a minute, I don't have memories of going through something you know, difficult or this doesn't make sense. Well, all of us have been through something difficult. If your parents were divorced, if you saw your parents yell, if your parents were late picking you up at some point or yelled at you at some point at an inopportune time, may not, maybe they didn't play a game with you or throw the football. There are countless different ways we suffer emotionally overwhelming events as children. There's the obvious typical abuse, but most people minimize and suppress, go, oh, that doesn't matter, but it does. And I'm gonna show you how and why. And so the first piece is to give yourself permission to accept the truth that you went through difficult things in childhood. That's the first step in this process, is to let that in. And here's why, if we don't, as I said, it'll have long-term consequences on our health, our relationships, our career, if we don't address this, because all of that emotion is robbing us of our full potential. So now we move on to figuring out where did this, you know, revving get stuck? Where did it happen? Well, to do that, go to Google, Type in feelings list, and you're gonna see something that looks like a wheel, all right, a feelings wheel. And it has concentric circles, and in the, at the beginning, it, you know, in the middle, it's very simple feelings like good, bad, and then a little bit deeper feelings, and then on the outside, really in-depth, you know, curious, you know, th th those type of feelings. So, grab that feelings list, and notice yourself bouncing your leg, and ask yourself, what am I feeling? Well, for most people, they won't feel anything. So stop bouncing your leg. Well, when you stop, all of a sudden, look at that feelings wheel. You're gonna notice frustration, anxiety, anger, sadness, fear. It could be a whole host of emotions, but you're feeling them, all right? So that's the first indication that this is a feeling problem and that it happened a long time ago. So let's find it. The next step is ask yourself, where in my body do I feel it? Now you might feel it in your legs, but it could be your stomach, your chest, your throat, many different places. Write it down, all right? The third, this is the third step of the process. Ask yourself, what's my first memory of having this thought, this feeling thought, and this feeling in my body? Now for most people, they're gonna remember something in the last one to five years, all right? If that's you, write it down. 
Then ask yourself, what's my next memory before that? Write that down. Next memory before that, write it down. Keep tracing it all the way down and eventually you're going to arrive at a moment in childhood where you go, oh my gosh, that was overwhelming. That scared the living heck out of me. Now, for some, they may not remember a specific event. It just may be the mood around that age. It resonates. Others may have no memory at all. Well, and here's why. That tells me that their mother was in so much stress and fear in childhood that the basal ganglia got turned on even in the womb, which studies show can happen, okay? So that's the original source of the bouncing leg. And as I said, if you choose not to address it, it'll have long-term consequences on your health, your relationships, friendships, your career, everything. Because that bouncing is anxiety. It's unhealed pain from our past. And our body's trying to tell us, can you please go look at this? So if you decide to look at it and you'd like the answer, check the link. This is your way. It'll give you the complete process to start shifting and healing that emotion so you can learn to stop bouncing your leg. Now, if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. I look forward to seeing you at the next video. Have a great day.